Okay, so here we have a panoramic that Daniello made. And I went ahead and filled in the bottom and the top a little bit using some simple things that you already know but you might have forgotten about that we'll review. So he photographed this in a bakery. He stitched it together using um, the automatic panoramic stitching option. Um, and a lot of times what will happen is you'll have these gaps that you want to fill in such as here and content aware doesn't always work perfectly right if you hit delete and then choose content aware it does a nice job oftentimes with um, smooth areas skies and so forth and sometimes can do an okay job with other areas such as grass but with complicated textures oftentimes it's really obvious um, that the content aware tool has um, duplicated certain areas over and over again and when you see a really strong pattern the eye recognizes patterns very easily and it's a dead giveaway to your viewer that you've duplicated areas over and over and over again um, it's something that you want to be careful with the patch tool as well as the cloning tool and also with this content aware so we see the same pattern duplicated on the top and bottom that's not doing a very good job of, fuel, of fooling the viewer, right? So we want to try and uh, do something else instead. So I'm going to go back in history here. And we're going to do a rather old-fashioned job of um, copying and pasting and retouching. Oftentimes it takes more than one type of solution to come up with a realistic view, okay? So um, what we're going to do here is evaluate the area and I'm going to take my marquee tool and make a really big selection just of this whole piece right here. Okay, and I'm going to activate the layer that I'm going to copy and paste from. That's this background layer. I'm going to go ahead and just unlock it. And I'm going to choose layer new layer via copy or command J which um, move that out of the way, which goes ahead and puts this layer right here and you can see it sitting by itself. Um, so right now it blends in because we haven't done anything with the layer, but uh, then I'm going to grab my move tool and instead of clicking and dragging with the mouse, I'm going to use my down arrow key because that keeps the access correct. And I'm just going to nudge it a little bit down and you can see, see that it did a better job of the content aware tool in terms of the believability but if we zoom in to actual pixels or 100 percent we still see some replication here that's a bit, a bit of a giveaway so some things that we can do then are to add the mask the layer mask here and blend in this edge slightly I'm gonna go ahead and choose black and I'm just blending in the edge to kind of merge it with the image below it and that was a really quick and easy way of getting rid of that gap below other things that you can do if you're still having some replication of pattern here that that draws the eyes attention to the fact that you manipulated that area is you can add a retouching layer on top and use your healing brush remember we, we added a blank retouching layer on top it's in the current and below mode I'm going to increase my brush size a little bit and you can choose from an area that's slightly different and you can break up the pattern a little bit you see how we're doing that so that the eye isn't constantly looking for that repeating pattern that maybe wasn't a good job I'm going to undo that Okay, get the idea? Um, and you can keep going and zoom in and out to kind of evaluate the area and see how it's looking. Create some diversity, sample from other parts of the image, bring it into the area that you've worked on with the healing tool. Here's an area that kind of has a weird inconsistency in the color, uh, which is sometimes happens when pixels are trying to blend together. And one way to kind of work with this is to add a new layer and call it hand coloring. You have to be careful when you use hand coloring because it can really de de uh, saturate the image if you're not 
using it uh, in a mild fashion. And I'm going to option click to kind of sample a color here from a part of this picture. And then I'm going to reduce my opacity so I can just build up the color. And if you just go ahead and hand color normally or color it normally, the paint looks like it's sitting on top of the picture, which is not what we want. So you need to go ahead and change your blend mode here to the color blend mode, which will uh, be more forgiving and show the black luminosity pixels through. And then you can go in and slowly build up the color and see if that works to kind of blend in that irregular color splotch. You see how that works? Just keep it nice and mellow. If you overdo it again, you'll notice that the color starts to desaturate a little bit or it starts to look, it loses the dimension because all of a sudden it's a flat one color area. So um, be gentle with that technique. Um, and I think, you know, it's a good thing to do in areas where you have some um, strange lighting temperature things going on. I could duplicate this neutral gray area and kind of neutralize this wall if you want to. It's up to your discretion. Sometimes temperature shifts are interesting. Sometimes they just kind of look like an accident. Like here, I think it looks kind of like an accident. So I'm going to go ahead and hand color in this area. All right. And then you get a smaller brush. You can also make a very fine selection with the pen tool and edit fill this color in that area in the color blend mode. Some other things to think about uh, when you're cropping um, is that if I want to keep, if I don't want to have to retouch in just a little bit over here, and I want to crop it instead, but I don't want to lose the detail of the cupcakes here. See, I'll show you. If we just do a regular crop here, and we crop out that white area, it's going to look OK, except we're going to lose all of the goodies here, which is really what this picture is all about. It's a cupcake shot. So instead, I'm going to choose the perspective check mark up here. And that allows me to change the perspective of the image slightly. Um, we're not really going to be correcting for perspective, but what it allows me to do then is I can keep all of these areas, but I can kind of tweak this corner right here. And sometimes it's difficult to control it with your mouse. So again, using your arrow tool, and then I'm just going to bring this back up here. And you'll notice that everything else has stayed the same. You want to make sure that stays the same. And so instead of cropping the entire bottom off, I'm really just cropping this one little area here. Um, make sure that stays the same. And now I'm now this little sliver here is going to be a lot easier to retouch because it's a lot less of a white area than we had before. So after you've cropped the image and you've done some work uh, blending in the blank areas, you want to really consider the picture as if you photographed it as one frame. And so that means using your workflow, selecting, adjusting, masking particular areas that need tonal and color adjustments. For example, over here, I'm going to select the marquee tool. and uh, perhaps do a bit of a um, curve adjustment. I'm going to use my tap tool here to see uh, where this, the values lie. And I might choose to kind of open up that area a little bit, OK? Um, because she's getting a little bit lost here. Um, if you Remember, if you want to keep the um, color saturation the way it is, change this to luminosity blend mode. And then, of course, we want to mask that adjustment we made so that it's nice and smooth when you zoom in, OK? So you're going to want to go through and look at that. Um, this image also could use a little bit of uh, perhaps warmth, warmth to the skin tones, if that's desirable. Once you've done your selective curves, there is a question about sharpening. You want to size the image 
to your desired size first. So if uh, Danilo's going to do 8 by 10s prints, he's going to crop this and do four 8 by 10s. He's going to choose a height of 8 probably and then say OK. Then we're going to add the sharpness to the, the image after it's been sized. OK? And there are a lot of different ways you can sharpen. I'm going to choose the high pass sharpening technique. And um, in order to ensure that I include all the retouching layers in, I'm going to shift click and select all of my layers and then hold down my option key and choose merge visible. And instead of merging everything into one layer, it merges everything into a new layer. And this is going to be my sharpening layer. And it's inclusive of all the retouching beneath it. So I'm going to choose filter other high pass. And with the high pass sharpening, you just really want to see the edges of the image. So sometimes it requires that you get in here and zoom in a radius of 0.5 to 1.2 or 1.3 is usually plenty. You just want to see the very edges because what we're doing is we are actually burning and dodging or adding contrast to the edges of the image. And we're going to put this in the soft light blend mode, which is the same blend mode that we use for burning and dodging, only this is only affecting the edges of the image. Here's my before, here's my after. You can see that really in the edges of the picture. It's very, very subtle. If it's too strong, you can dial down the opacity. If it's not strong enough, you can duplicate that layer as many times as you need to or combine it with a uh, unsharp mask filter. So those are some suggestions on how to make your panoramic a little bit easier to deal with in terms of um, the seamless quality as well as prepping.